Um, well, hello and um, welcome. It's Paul from ESPC. And uh, no, we're not doing the podcast because my psychic, my co-host today is... <laughs> yeah, it's Megan. Um, we're going to be talking you through some of the latest data from ESPC. Um, this is our second uh, edition of ESPC Digest. And um, yeah, we're excited to, to share a little bit more of a, a wider look at what we've seen um, over the last few months, even the last few, uh, 12 months. Um, and yeah, we'll chat that through. So just a little bit more of a wider view than our normal house price report. Yeah, we, we get a bit more time, don't we? So we, we're, we're going to look at the house price report and some of the stats from there. We'll, we'll touch upon that and then we'll take a deep dive into some of the details. And then we'll be, uh, we'll be talking about the East. Um, yes. And exactly. yeah, I mean, I mean, shall we have a little look at the agenda, Megan, and what uh, the key highlights that we wanted to just share yes. with, with our audience? That's not, yeah, of, of course. Um, so yeah, we're going to touch on um, the the sales prices, um, how that's looking for across our regions, um, and that there's a bit less pressure um, see in that market. And um, we'll also be talking about our listings, number of listings, and how we're seeing more properties, which means there's more choice for buyers. And yeah, Paul, as you mentioned, we're going to be doing a focus on Edinburgh East um, and all the hot spots within that region. Okay, doke. Um, so we'll start with a little bit of analysis over the average selling prices. I think it's it's probably a good place to start. We think, isn't it, Megan? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this slide here, we, we're looking at a bit of a, a wider um, time frame period than we did uh, in the house price report. So our house price report covers the the last quarter, so that would be January, February, March. Um, and this one, we just wanted to have a look at a, have a wider look at the sales um, prices from the last few years, just to show that um, we're a little bit down um, um, from the period of April to March, the last. The, uh, previous 12 months that we've just seen we're down on the 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 month the 2022-2023 stats but um, we're still ahead of two years ago so it's just to kind of show that that there's an ebb there's been ebbs and flows but um that it's still it's still in an upward trajectory yeah and i think it's a couple of things to to add there i mean certainly in in the sort of quarter that, that's just gone so january february march we saw a 0.3 percent rise but you know this is the average sale price we're talking about one of the reasons that we see um a change of fluctuation in average selling prices can be the type of property that sells i think we said it before if we sell more four pumas and less lamborghinis the average sale price is a lot lower clearly if you sell if you sold nothing but lamborghinis your average sale price would be a lot higher so um, you know, that, that's something to bear in mind. We've, certainly what we want to make clear here is we don't think we've seen a house price crash or anything so anything some significant as that. But what we have seen, and it's illustrated in the next graph there, the percentage over the home report valuation, and um, so the premium that's been paid has, has certainly decreased. And there's a couple of reasons for that, isn't there, Megan? Yeah, there really is. I mean, uh, we know that um, the the reason that buyers are, are, aren't having to pay as much of a premium is kind of twofold. One is that valuations are now kind of coming in line with what people are already paying. Um, so we're seeing valuation, property valuations are higher, so people aren't having to pay that premium. But also there is more stock, and we'll come on to that more uh, uh, later on um, in this chat. But we're seeing more properties, so there's more choice and, um, you know, the the more supply it kind of is leveling out with the demand so uh, there's less competition for for certain properties yeah and i think just on the premium there um just to put in some sort of context again if we look at um the our latest house price report uh, we see that the premium now sits at 100 0.9 percent so almost 101 percent of the home report uh, value that's on average so some people are getting more some people are getting less you know that's down we were we've been up 104 we we're up at over 108 at one point so you know say things have cooled prices have caught up we've also seen some more fixed price properties coming to market and generally you don't find that they attract a premium you're generally getting somewhere near the home report again depends on what price they've come on the market at but these are all contributing factors we think to that that sort of reduction in the the premium that's been paid but it's no bad thing as we'll see sales are holding up um yeah. now because first time i was able to get on the ladder they're not needing as much deposit and um, well they need the deposit but they're not having to find the extra to to secure the property which again we think is a good thing for a we need a fully functioning market so it's no bad thing and i think the key thing which is driving all this is there's an increase in supply so there's more properties coming to the market again if we look at the house price report for march listings were up 6.16.5 percent uh, 
Our available stock on ESBC.com is now 30% year on year. So there's a third more properties. As a consequence, you know, people are offering slightly less and things are taking a little bit longer to sell, which is a brilliant segue to the next slide, I think, Megan. And we it can just is. see exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like <Absolutely>. with practice. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so um, it is a little bit of a slower uh, time to sell um, that period of January to March this year. We're sitting at 31 days to sell. Um, and, you know, if you look at the previous two years for the same time period, um, we're edging slower and slower. But, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing to be slower than 18 days. It, you know, that is a very brisk time to be on the market. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we're sitting around that. It's a good that holiday. Isn't yeah, it? You, know, you literally had two weeks away. You go on holiday, put your board up, come back, and your place is sold. It, yeah. you know, and we know that there was a, a slight fear among sellers there that the property would sell so quickly, and they'd be forced to move, and they couldn't find anything. So, you know, this it does feel like things are a little bit more manageable now. There's there's more choice for people who put the properties on the market. Things are taking a little bit longer. Buyers don't feel as panicked to buy the first one they see. So, it does feel like that the market is. It's probably been kinder and fairer to, to both sellers and buyers, really. Yeah, Paul, I think something that you've said before is, is uh, you know, if you say uh, there's a saying of buy in haste, regret at leisure. So um, I think we're we're reducing that level of haste that people are ha having to have when they find something that they like. If they get a property alert from ESPC that something's gone on the market, it's not going to be as manic a rush to get to get um, to get a viewing booked and get an offer in because, you know, we've got a little bit of time to play with and you can have a look at a few different properties which I think yeah. is I think is nice is it I think what we'll see over a lot of these stats that we have um today is that it's a nicer more maybe calm market which I think everybody likes <laughs> you know yeah, se sellers definitely. um like I think we're still seeing sales happening um everything is really steady it's just happening um a little, more, a little more of a manageable yeah, pace. Yeah, we're, we're, we're observing the speed limit. <laughs> yes, exactly. Absolutely. You're more, 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 yeah, you're more, more, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so no bad thing. Um, and as I say, I think because sellers feel a little bit more confident, we, we've seen this again, probably illustrated in the next slide with, with that uptick in instructions. That's been particularly pronounced in the first quarter of 2024, you know, where instructions are up significantly on last year. Um, we're just going to have a little look at, at, at the graph here below. And I think what this illustrates is that, that we have seen a, a, an increase in instructions, certainly this year, and um, that's been more pronounced. Um, but as we were moving into the second half of last year, we started to see more properties come into market. That becomes self-fueling. Sellers feel more confident because they can find something, so they decide to sell theirs and so on and so on and so that 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 momentum is has certainly built yeah it's it's really nice to see um all of these new listings come and i think it just proves that again yeah as you said confidence in the market people are keen to to move um yeah. and then i suppose the next question to, to manage expectations here a little bit and um, we have seen you know as we've sort of explained in the other slides that the Number of properties going to closing date has reduced. Um, as I say, speed of sales taken gone longer. Some more properties are on fixed price or offers around. So we're not having as many closing dates for, for many reasons. Um, but that's down from 31.8% uh, to 23%. Um, again, no bad thing, really. Um, more choice for buyers out there, again. So more reasons why we're not seeing as so many closing dates you know those days of a property being listed six notes of interest within the first couple of days and then bang straight into a closing date um still happening still happening for the right property but but certainly overall we've seen that a slight slightly lessening in that in that number yeah which again is a is, is great news for first-time buyers who are maybe um you know don't feel like they can maybe offer as competitively as maybe some other or other buyers uh, on certain sought after properties but uh, yeah I think it's, it's really nice to see um, that just that competition that can be where a lot of disheartening uh, happens you know where, where a lot of people see the rejection because closing dates are just so competitive but um, yeah really good to see that that we're just as we well, as we've said for a lot of these points that we're just in a lot more of a stable calm market at the moment we're just going to summarize at the end there i'd say you know we were we've seen a little bit more supply um it does feel like a fairer market you know there's every chance that you're not going to have to pay the premium you would have done last year 
And um, yeah, there's probably a better chance of you, if it goes to closing, you've probably got a better chance than you had last year of, of securing the property. So, you know, lots of lots of good reasons to be considering buying now. And I think we do feel as the market will change as the year goes on, interest rates we think are really going to go one way, inflation seems to be calming. So hopefully there's a chance at the moment where the affordability is catching up a little bit. And I think we, we'll see those interest rates reduce. I still have my bets that it will be May for the first one. But we think again that may well sort of push the markets on a little bit because sales are holding up really well at the moment and there's again i think if we see interest rate reductions we may see more uh, more volume of sales in the second half of the year than maybe last year absolutely and um we did speak to a couple of our member firms in our most recent podcast episode and i think that the, as much as we're saying it's calm this might be the calm before the storm we might see huge uptick in um activity going into the summer months as those interest rates potentially start to fall and uh, yeah it's maybe becomes an even better um uh, time to buy in terms of that so yeah paul i think that's that's a wrap on part one of our, mm -hmm. our yes sure. I just, so we'll now move on to part two which is uh our yeah. coverage about and, and this is where, where we think the value is in in doing these sort of things isn't it because um you know we see some of the stats you notice things and you think oh where's the platform for us to be able to talk about this so we're going to talk about uh Edinburgh East now and again and song only I will know this song Easter Easter which was sung by Simple Minds from a long long time ago um I always like that song but I thought it, fit, it fitted quite well because it was a phenomena um that we noticed in the house price report that really a lot more people are going east at Easter around Easter time they're buying in the east and uh yeah. we're just going to really underline that now aren't we because it, it is it does feel like it's a hot spot Megan it really does and so if anyone is watching this and thinking okay we're is Edinburgh East? What does what comes under that um, region? Um, these are some of the districts that are within uh, Edinburgh East. So we kind of stretch from obviously Leith is in there. Uh, we've got places like Portobello, um, Abbey Hill, Bonnington, um, New Haven. These are all like really popular areas, um, and it's so it's quite wide reaching. And a lot of these areas mm. are very close together. Well, obviously they're close together, but they're they're little little pockets of activity, which I yeah. think um, is what we're really interested in chatting more about just now. You know, it's more than just Leaf, isn't it? I think you know we 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 almost boring ourselves now because we always mention Leaf, but there's those other areas in and around. You know, it's nice that Easter Road gets a mention as well. You know, yeah, <laughs> other, other areas. <laughs> Absolutely, and I think something about um obviously the popularity of leith has started to feed mm. out into those you know the ripple effect. that are right next door so if, as i mentioned bonnington leith walk easter road um those places are having a bit of a uh a, a busyness as well which is nice so in terms of uh we thought we would maybe do a comparison to what's happening across all of our regions and then what's happening in Edinburgh East, just so you can compare um, the stats. So obviously our average selling price for, um, the, and this is for the last 12 months, so not what our uh, house price report data is just the last three months. This is just a wider look at what's been happening over the last 12 months. So yeah, average selling price across Edinburgh, the Lothians, Fife and the Borders was 279000 But in Edinburgh East, we're looking at just slightly under that, so slightly more affordable, one of our more affordable areas, um, 262000 Um and the median time to sell uh, quicker as well, 19 days over the last year, if you wanted to get a property in uh, in Edinburgh East, which I think is quite promising, you know, if you're a seller, that is, that is good news. Um, and uh, listings, the new listings we've had over the last 12 months in Edinburgh East were, I think that works out, I did do my sums before this, I think it's about 18% um, mm. of all the listings on ESPC.com were from Edinburgh, uh, Edinburgh East, which I think, mm -hmm. It's quite significant. That's almost a almost a fifth. Yeah, and we 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 have seen that within there. We know annually, um, Leith is the we see the most volume of listings and most volume of sales last year. And again, we'll probably see it again this year because and again, it's density of property, isn't it? There's a lot of property. You say a lot of chimney pots. No, there's not too many chimney pots these days. A lot of balconies, lots of flats there, isn't there in those yeah. areas? 
Yeah, there is. And something that we're conscious of as well, we always flag Leith as a great place for first time buyers, which it absolutely is. But we're seeing lots of different buyers in mm. Edinburgh East and Leith, Leith specifically, um, you know, downsizers who are maybe wanting a bit of city life. They're wanting maybe one of these nice flats, as you mentioned, Paul, with a balcony and, um, ju- you know, they don't need as much space. Um, when their uh, kids have left so yeah I think it it offers a nice lifestyle and uh, yeah it's it's very popular and and for a good reason it's that Leith is lovely and yeah the wider um, Edinburgh East has a lot of little pockets of similar similar types of neighbourhoods. Yeah I think again we've, we've mentioned so many times the tram line I think is you know is, is certainly had an impact and we can see that and again you see buy to let investment in, in in that area as well um, but we are now Going to talk about somewhere else, somewhere, somewhere that we yes. haven't. I don't think I've mentioned this location. So apologies, we've not mentioned this location on our show ever. I don't think. No, no, not at all. So, <laughs> um, we're going to chat through um, Brunston, um, which has actually been a, a location that we were really interested in after we were looking at our house price report and looking at the data. Um, so over the last three months, um. The average price that's being paid over the home report valuation in Brunston was 6.7%. So that's obviously quite significant compared to our region wide mm-hmm. stat, which was, was less than 1%. So um, Brunston obviously in high demand. Um, over the last 12 months, the median time to sell there has been 14 days, even quicker than um, the stat we saw in the last yeah. slide. Um, average selling price a little bit under um, what we're seeing at the average for Edinburgh East at two hundred and thirty six thousand, which, again, maybe it's a little bit, a little bit more affordable out of all of the areas that you can pick to, to buy, um, and just seventeen percent of the properties there went to a closing date. So, yeah, I think we wanted to chat through Brunston because. Um, it's somewhere we've never discussed. It's obviously some, <laughs> somewhere that's caught a lot of people's eyes, mm. um, and I think. You know the lifestyle as well. Brunston has kind of got a lot of um, a- a- amenities that are great. It's quite close to the Jewel, which is where there's a large ASDA. It's quite close to Joppa and Portobello, so a short walk to the beach. Um, mm-hmm. But also has a train, its own train station. So a very, I think it's makes a big like difference. Less than ten minutes into town, so um, it's really, um, yeah something that I think as people start to go maybe go back to the office more and are looking for somewhere that's a short commute and an easy commute Brunston it seems to be a, a great option. Yeah and I think the other thing is um, as you can see there from the images there's a real diversity of type of property it's not all just one type of property there's a real there's a real range from from new to old from from plaster to um, houses so yeah it's uh it's it doesn't come as a surprise. Um, we probably should have been speaking about it sooner, but here we are. <laughs> Brunston, <Yeah>. we're sorry. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So yeah, if you're looking for somewhere that has all the place kind of amenities that we've just mentioned, uh, definitely check out Brunston um, because there's a lot of activity happening there. Um, yeah. The next thing we're going to move on to was just we wanted to cover the top performing areas in Edinburgh East so a lot of these places we have already mentioned but uh, yeah uh, as as always Leith is our kind of top performer and this and these are top performing areas in terms of our number of sales so these are where the most properties sell in Edinburgh East and mm-hmm. um, so yeah and to Leith, be fair I think it's safe to say isn't it Megan to be the most popular area for sales probably need to have quite a few listings coming on here as well yeah. Um, so these are generally bigger areas and areas where, as you say, there's there's more more properties coming to the market, more chimney pots. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, those are um, all um, kind of close to bodies of water, I think is the best way to yes. describe these three. <laughs> um, I, uh, I think I read somewhere that... Um, the closer you are to a coastline, um, you are more like the, the happier you're supposed to be. So, if if these three are anything to go by, we're supposed they should be one three of the happiest places in Edinburgh <laughs> to live. If that's yeah. true, yeah. I mean, Leaf's got a few bo- bodies of water. If that's your description, because it's got the water of Leaf as well, which we should yeah. forget. Um, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, what a vista that Portobello's got, and and the shore. Yeah, absolutely. All of them are. Uh, and we, I think we saw that since lockdown, didn't we? That desire to be either in the country or nearer to water or wherever. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what's also nice about these three um, neighbourhoods um, are that they all kind of have their own high street as well. They mm. all have 
yeah. know, access to local amenities that are, are really good. So, yeah, I think that's what a lot of buyers are looking for as well. I think as well, I'd say almost their own identity, as you yeah. say, you know, they, they, they feel different. We, we've just done a special in Leaf, haven't we, for a podcast and, yeah. you know, there are lots of independent stores and coffee and people just making their way in independent business. It does feel, it did feel very different from being in the centre of Edinburgh, you, you know, and so how often do you go there? Can you, can you stay within your locale? You know, as we know, I mean, you'll know this living so close <laughs> yeah. uh, to Port Belladay, yeah. you know, you stay within your own little area, don't you? Yeah, you do. And um, yeah, if, if, if there's a shop that you can get something, just a five minute walk from your house you're more likely to obviously go there than, than trek into into town so yeah i think these are these are great great areas for that um i think we're now going to focus a bit more on sales price for some properties in different areas and um so we were going to focus first on our premium areas so these are um areas that the selling price is a little bit higher uh, than the average um and we're um yeah our more premium uh, properties um yeah. So uh, these three areas, we've got Joppa, Duddingston and Willow Bray. All really Looking nice areas. You. Looking at yeah. you. You can see, is that North Berwick you can see in the distance there? I <laughs> think, I don't, I not, yeah, I'm not sure, but that is, uh, yeah, they're three um, also quite close together um, mm. areas um, in Edinburgh East. So Joppa just next to Portobello and between Portobello and Brunston. Um, and then um, you've got Duddingston, uh, which again is is kind of on the other side. Yeah, it often <laughs> gets missed. I mean, uh, when I maybe it's just me when I first moved to Edinburgh, and I was looking. I, I, I kind of stumbled upon Duddingston. I was like, "Wow, this is really nice." You know, there's some lovely property there. It is, and it's home to a lot of the sought after Edinburgh bungalows as well. Mm, and a lot yeah, of people really like those, um, yeah. and it's also where we filmed our TV ad, our latest TV ad. Absolutely. So. Uh, yeah, I can I can attest that Duddingston is is lovely and Willowbray close by as well, a little bit closer to the city, um, and yeah, uh, that, lovely that's sea a genuine sea view though, definitely yeah. a sea view. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So moving on to maybe the other end of the scale, we've got some of our more affordable areas in Edinburgh East. So if you're looking to to live in Edinburgh East and you maybe got a bit of a smaller budget, these are some of the areas to to check out. Again, these are slightly further away from the city centre. They're probably on the edge of Edinburgh East, um, but I think um, you know some great prices and these are obviously average selling prices you can get obviously properties under these under these values that we've got on screen there as you say when we talk about affordability you know we are ever mindful at two hundred thousand pounds it may not be affordable to everyone but these again will stress our average sales prices so you know you'll find a one bedroom property in some of these areas comes uh, a lot less than maybe a two or a three so these are the averages and yeah it's nice to see you know as i say um some good volume of sales in these areas as well and in terms of affordability, yes, you know, the, these are the, the top four. Yeah, Wrestle Rig is also quite close to Leith. Um, so if you're looking for something nearby Leith, uh, it's kind of between Leith and Portobello. Um, Nidri and Craig Miller, obviously further away from the city centre, um, as well as Northfield. So, yeah, these are, um, you know, great options um, and great chances for maybe from first time buyers to get on the ladder too. Um, but in terms of that, that's kind of all of our stats for Edinburgh East. Um, and well, that is the end of, of ESBC Digest, <laughs> this, this edition. Um, yeah. Paul, I don't, don't know, know where we go next. Stats. <laughs> maybe Edinburgh West, maybe Edinburgh South. Maybe. We'll, 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 we'll be led by the stats, really, won't we, Megan, uh -huh. where, where we go next so, and what we look at. Um, but, you know, hopefully you've enjoyed today. Um, we should just remind people that we do have other information available on ESPC.com, the latest house price, which you referenced a few times today, uh, you'll find on the news section there. And uh, Meg and I also do a weekly podcast. Yes, we do. Um, so the most recent episode that went out last Thursday um, was the um, property market report. So a deep dive on some of our quarter one data. Um, but we also spoke to two of our solicitor estate agents who kind of give an update on what's actually happening with buyers and sellers um, since the start of the year, which uh, is, is great. It's a great listen. So uh, if you enjoyed this, you should go and listen to that. <laughs> next. Yeah, and we, we, we try to avoid repetition. So, you know, we changed it up a little bit. It's not the same show again, really. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I'd say thanks everyone for taking the time to listen to the digest today. I hope you found that useful and you got some more insights with, and the story behind some of the stats. So um, from myself and from... From Megan, <laughs> me. <laughs> thanks for listening and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. -bye. bye.